What's up, everybody? This is Mitch from BoardCo. Welcome to the show. And I am going to be talking to you today about um, a subject that I think might be the most, if if not one of the most, uh, important subjects when we start talking about towboats, when we're talking about wake surfing, when we're talking about all of those different aspects, as well as I think it's something that in my discussions with different people might be the most misunderstood topic of anything that is discussed. And that is wake surf waves. Now, this is something that is, uh, this is way more complicated, way more nuanced. There's way more going on than what most people expect. And that is probably the biggest misconception. Most people think that surf waves are all basically the same, that they are, that um, they just can be bigger or smaller. Um, but re in reality, there's so much more to it. And if you've got any kind of like an ocean surfing background, uh, especially if you're a pretty advanced ocean surfer, this can make a lot of sense to you. And this will be a very intuitive, clear thing. Um, but for those of us that are landlocked and have not spent, uh, like I've only been surfing in the ocean a handful of times, um, for people that are here landlocked, they've never surfed in the ocean or have had limited experience with it. This is going to be an entirely new concept, and, but it's something that has a dramatic impact um, when you're wake surfing and that a lot of people just don't really understand. And the, the really interesting thing is it leads people to make decisions, particularly as involving um, what might end up being the second most uh, significant purchase that they make of their entire life, which is a surf boat. Um, sometimes they can make that with incorrect information um, or misconceptions or assumptions that are that are not accurate. And so I want to dive into it and talk about this today and dive into the details of surf waves. And I apologize because this is going to probably get a little bit nerdy and a little in the weeds. And if uh, that's not your thing and you don't really care and you're just going, hey, I just want to be able to go and surf by the boat, this might not be the best podcast for you. I'd recommend you go check out some of the other um videos that we have on YouTube or on our website that are talking about uh, surf waves and specifically um, some of the different surf wave behind Centurion boats or things. Um, but because we show you more stuff and we go through this in probably a more basic format, but I want to dive into the nitty gritty details when we start talking about surf waves, how they're composed, how they work, what matters, what the different variables are that impact them, how those variables are created, and what that ends up for you doing for you as a rider. So hopefully this will be helpful for you, even if you're not necessarily shopping for a boat or looking at something like that. This will hopefully be helpful information that may lead to you being able to dial on a better wake surf way for you and your family, which is is a big factor and can be can uh, hopefully make a big difference for you. So let's. Uh, so I, I first wanted to start with a a caveat that I want to hit on, which is that uh, I run and operate a company called BoardCo. Uh, we do stuff in the marine space, specifically dealing with, uh, we have an e-commerce store where we sell surfboards and wakeboards and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, also have a Centurion and Supreme Boats dealership that's attached to it. We're selling new Centurion Supreme Boats as well as used boats from uh, every kind of manufacturer, primarily other towboat manufacturers like Malibu, Master, Graf, Nautique, et cetera. So I'm familiar with virtually everything and the stuff that I'm going to be talking to you today about. Um, but I, and I'm going to try and come at this as unbiased as I possibly can, but I just got to have that, uh, that disclaimer that's thrown in there of all the information, uh, that comes into me. It's obviously coming from sources that may not be as, uh, as unbiased as I'm trying to be. And so, um, I'm going to try and give you just the straight facts and information as best as of what I know. So let's dive into it and let's talk about the elements of a surf wave. Now, first thing, um, we're just going to talk about some of the elements that uh, that uh, exist in a surf wave. Some of these you're going to definitely be familiar with, but some of them you may not be. So the first one is obviously the height of the wave. That's the most easily identifiable feature. Everyone knows there's a difference between taller waves and shorter waves, and that's pretty straightforward. And that's that's something that my my eight year old can identify and very easily point out of Hey, that wave is bigger than the other wave. So that's something to talk about is you have the height of the wave. Now, the next piece, though, is the length of the surf wave. Now, this is something I thought was fairly intuitive, but it turns out it may not necessarily be as intuitive as I was expecting, because some people do not understand what having a longer surf wave could do for you, especially if your experience has been with, let's say, a 2015 or older towboat, um, particularly like a Malibu or a Mastercraft or, or something along those lines, um, something with a really flat hull shape. The idea of having a longer surf wave 
is something that just kind of gets lost or in the confusion for people. Um, and the reason why is because it, they don't know what a longer surf wave is or what it looks like. So when I'm starting talking about a longer surf wave, um, uh, what I'm saying is I, I'm a, it means that if you have a boat that sits here, you can end up having waves that come back off. And the longer the length of the surf wave from the basically the back of the boat, the swim platform, out to where the wave breaks and curls and becomes no longer surfable, that the, the pocket, I would say, that is talking about the length of the surf wave. Now, different waves will have different characteristics. Some waves will have a lot of uh, more wavelengths than others. Um, there's some variables that you can do to impact the length of the surf wave um, that I'll get to in just a minute. But when we start talking, when we're talking about the length of the wave, it's just how far back can you surf behind the boat? And uh, just understand that on some boats, that may not necessarily mean you can surf well. There's some boats that you get to the back of the pocket and it's it's really hard to stay in the pocket. There's other surf boats where you can hang out right where the wave is crashing and you it, it's the same amount of power as when you're right up close to the boat. That one's some dynamics that are going to be different for different boats that I'll get into in just a minute. Um, but when we start talking about the wave length, that's what we're referring to is how much surfable area is there behind the boat. So... Um, hopefully cover that piece and you, you understand what I'm referring to when I talk about that. Now, the next piece that we can talk about is the shape of the surf wave. This is another thing that people can kind of get confused about. We're talking about how steep or how mellow the surf wave is. So a steep surf wave is a wave that's got a face that's really, um, that's really vertical and really steep. So if you go up on the top of it, it's sometimes going to be curling up over yeah. And the wave, the wave is, is more vertical face value than horizontal. A mellow surf wave is something that's going to be more like a big, smooth, mellow mound. So it's going, to have, it's going to have a big, smooth tabletop type shape to it. So the more mellow a surf wave is, the more gradual it goes from the bottom of the trough to the top of the face or the peak. So the more gradual that flow is, the more mellow the wave is, the more abrupt it is, the steeper the wave is. Now, there's some boats that, depending on what you've surfed behind, that pretty much exclusively throw a steep wave. So an example of that would be like a Nautique G-Series. There, there's really no such thing as a mellow wave behind a Nautique. Um, it's either you got a big steep wave or a small steep wave or a bigger, steeper wave. Um, where there's other boats that will can throw a more mellow surf wave much easier, particularly those with a, those with a tap style surf system like a Mastercraft or a Centurion or something. Uh, those are a little bit easier to throw a more mellow style surf wave, but you have the ability to go steep or mellow. Um, and there's a lot of variations in between. Um, one of the other variations that you can talk about here um, that is really going to the extreme end on the steep side, uh, and this is something that guys will sometimes refer to in the ocean space, is a wave that's hollow. This means that the wave is actually curling up over um, and that you got guys are going and riding in the pocket. Now, Surf waves aren't, wake surf waves aren't big enough to where we're getting fully barreled um, in these, where you're getting uh, full pitted, where you're essentially blue room, where you're standing in between the curl. Um, but you can have a wave that's really hollow, meaning that it's got a big curl that sits towards the back of the wave and it's, it has a ton of power and, and juice to it. Um, that's something that you have to have a wave that's big enough and has enough power to it to actually create a hollow wave. But that is kind of the extreme end on the shape side of the steepness or on the steep side of shapes is going to a wave that's fully hollow. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about shape of wave. So we've got height, we've got length, and we've got the shape, those three ver ver variables right now. Now, we've got two more to talk about. The next one is talking about the angle of the surf wave. This is one that a lot less people are familiar with. So when we start talking about the angle of the wave, we're talking about how the angle comes off of the back of the boat. So if we have the back of the boat um, that's sitting here and you have a wave that fans or that fans perpendicular to the boat and fans outwards, that is what we refer to as a shallow angle wave. Where if you have a wave that fans more verti or fans vertically um, or f fans more uh, parallel to the direction of the boat, that is going to be a wave that is a steeper angle or a or a deeper angle, I should say. So when we have this, we have a, we have shallow and we have deep. And the difference between them is they're going to have some different dynamics. You can have a shallow wave that even might have a long wavelength. So it might be surfable all the way to the back of it, 
but you really only have the ability to surf in a specific area because once you get further back out, you're not actually going further back on the wave. You're just fanning out to the side. So um, there's some advantages and some disadvantages to this shape. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit. So, um, but the main difference that you end up having here, it, sorry, we'll back up. <laughs> So when we're talking about the shallow wave, you may have a pocket that's a, that's a smaller pocket you actually will want to or have the ability to surf in, but you can go further. I don't even want to say back on the wave. It's more further out the side on the wave. Um, and so it's going to fan really far out to the side, um, which there's advantages and disadvantages to. The advantage to do this is it will kind of catch you if you're if falling further back. So it's kind of hard to fall out of the wave if you're a beginner. Um the downside to it is that your actual surfable runway area is substantially shorter. And so even if the wave is longer, you just have a really small pocket you can mess with. When you start talking about a deeper wave, it's kind of the opposite. If you've got a beginner, they can potentially fall out the back of it a little bit easier, but you have a much longer spectrum um, to be able to surf in. And the advantage to that is that is what is the biggest advantage with having a deeper pocket is a similar advantage to having a longer surf wave. They're, they're similar things, but they're not exactly the same. But if you have a long wave and you have a deep pocket wave, then what you can do is you can use that wave to generate substantially more speed coming into the boat. So as you come in and have more speed you're shooting in, that makes it so that you have a lot more speed to come into bottom, turn out the side, to uh, launch and snap off the lip of the wave, to air out the top, even things such as like 360s, the holy grail of wake surf tricks that everybody wants to land, that can be made a lot easier by having a deep pocket wave that you can generate speed coming into. Because the biggest challenge that most people have with 360s is that they come around and they lose speed and they fall out the back of the wave. So the easiest way to prevent that is to generate speed coming into your 360, and then you'll still be moving in a forward direction when you come out of your 360. So when it, when it comes down to it, that's what we're talking about when we are talking about the angle of a surf wave. And that is something that most people don't really talk about or discuss, but it really makes a difference when you're surfing behind the boat. So the last aspect um, to it is uh, what I would refer to as the power and push of the wave. Now, when I'm referring to this, is this, uh, this is essentially referring to how heavy the wave is. And this is a uh, this is a factor that's going to be much more familiar to you if you've done a lot of ocean surfing, because what you'll have is you can have waves that are really big and tall, but they don't feel the same. They don't have as much power to them as some waves that are really deep or really heavy is what they refer to it. Now, if we're t looking at this, um, it, what it's going to look like is you're going to have a wave that is going to be that, that you might have wa two waves that are the same height overall. But what ends up happening is, is that you're, you have one of these waves that is going to be substantially thicker than the other. So if you have two waves that are the same height and one is way thicker than the other wave, that even though one is going to be more, even though um, the waves may have the same height, the thicker one is going to have substantially more power to it. Now that power is the push that you feel. A lot of times people mistake power for wave height, and it, it it's a variable there, but it's not nearly as important as how much power push the wave has, which is dealing with how heavy or light the wave is. Essentially, a heavier wave has a lot more mass to it, which is going to push you along much better than a lighter wave does. So the other piece that comes into it is how firm or soft a wave is. So a heavier wave and a wave that is going to have uh, is going to be more firm than a softer or than a uh, lighter wave. So heavier equal, equals more firm. Uh, softer equals um, oops, sorry, uh, thinner wave or lighter wave equals uh, softer. Now, what do I mean when I'm talking about heavier or soft? Now, if you haven't served behind a bunch of different waves, that may make absolutely no sense. You may go, "What is he talking about?" Um, there's certain waves where if you push into them they will push you right back. So they're really firm. So it, it's kind of, think of it as, uh, think of it as the difference between like, let's say a, a spring and like memory foam. So memory foam would be the equivalent of a really soft wave. So you push into it and it just kind of gives um, versus a spring on like a firm wave where you push into it, it just immediately pushes right back. 
So why does this matter? Well, I found that if you're doing pretty much any tricks, whether we're talking about snaps, bottom turns, airs, anything like that, having a firm wave is and having um, a heavy wave is going to make a big difference because you're going to be able to push into it and it's going to it's going to hold up when you lean into it, um, which gives you a lot more stable platform to push into and do whatever you want to do. It also gives you a much firmer lip if you're wanting to do airs off the top of the wave, things like that. If you start talking about a wave that's going to feel really soft or it, it almost feels squishy, um, that's going to be something that uh, is going to be harder to air off of. It's going to be harder to uh, do a snap or a bottom turn or, or things of that nature than a wave that's good, that is more firm. Um, I know for probably 95% of you, what I'm talking about here isn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's something if you surf behind a bunch of different surf boats, you'll actually start to understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. And I have people all the time that uh, go out behind different boats and that they uh, go and ride behind a wave that's like a firm wave. And I actually tell them to slap the wave with their hand. And it's like it stings their hand because the wave just doesn't move. And it's it's really kind of cool, but it, it gives you a totally different experience while you're surfing. So that's something that's a really important factor that um, that is the last variable I wanted to talk about. Now, there's one other aspect that I'm not going to really hit on that is a variable, um, but I'm just going to hope that you deal with it and, and don't have it. And that is just how clean the wave is. So if we're talking about the cleanliness of the surf wave, it's got white wash and white water on the top of it. Um, Generally speaking, you should hopefully be able to deal with that behind just about any boat. Um, some boats have a really hard time getting rid of it. Uh, but if you've got a decent surf boat, that's going to not really be an issue. And you're going to have a clean wave all the way across. Uh, otherwise, what happens is that that wash is actually just broken up, disturbed water. And it's on the super end of the soft spectrum. And so you just actually blast right through it. Um, and or it will actually catch you as you're riding. So it'll catch your board, it'll catch your lip or, the, or the, your edge rail, um, and it'll just kind of mess you up. So it's a lot harder to spin on, it's a lot harder to air off of, it just makes it so it's not as good of an experience. Plus your wave isn't as pretty, which is a definite other factor. Okay, so hopefully that is, that's helpful, giving you some of the variables. We're going to talk about what each of those mean. But the variables we've got is we have height, we have length, we have shape, we have angle, and we have power. So those are the five variables that go into any surf wave. Now, how are these things created? Now, what I'm going to talk about here is probably the most important underlying principle when we are talking about wake surf waves that is the most misunderstood piece. So the most misunderstood piece isn't just the different variations of the waves or things like that. It is this, and that is there is no replacement for displacement. What I mean by that, a wake surf wave is one thing. It is water volume. Now, when you have water volume, it is then what you do with that water volume that uh, that impacts all of those things that I just mentioned, the wave height, the wave length, um, the power it has, the shape it has, things like that. But when you're st when you're talking about these different things, the only variable that really matters is how much water volume is being displaced behind the boat. People will ask me all the time, they're like, well, I want a wave that's really big and a wave that want a wave that's really long. Well, you can have a wave that's big and long, but you're never going to have a wave that is the same size that's short and the same size that's long because it defeats the whole premise. It is a certain amount of water volume that you can stretch out and make it longer, but the sheer nature of doing that is going to decrease the height of the wave. The same type of thing. You can have a wave that you can change the angle of, of how it comes off the back of the boat, but it's going to impact the length of it and the power that it has. So all of the, there's only one thing that you, there, there are two things you can do with water when creating a surf wave. You can displace the water. In other words, how much water is coming out the back end of the boat off the back side, how big of a hole, H-O-L-E, that your boat hull, H-U-L-L, -L, is digging in the water, in the surface of the water and how much water it is displacing. And that's the water that's coming out the back end. So water volume is one. And the second is how that water is being shaped. There's a lot of marketing rabble rabble that's going on all the time in the surf boat industry of that we have this special cool technology that's going to create and they use a lot of fun marketing words um, like delayed convergence, which is an actual thing, but it's just it, it's basically just a way of saying, hey, we're going to shape the water and make it so it's clean on one side or the other side. 
Um, but they say it's like it's a fancy, like they're these fancy things, but it's literally what every wake surf boat does. Um, but what they do is they displace the water behind the boat and then they shape it accordingly. That's it. Everything else that anybody talks about, if they're talking about stuff outside of those two things, it's just noise and it's marketing and it's them trying to sell you something that's um, that, that may not necessarily even be inaccurate. They're just trying to overcomplicate a very simple thing. And the reason why is because when you break it down that simply, it's also really easy to understand what it means and why you would want one boat versus another boat or how a boat does something. It just makes it very easy to explain and understand. Um, so let's talk about these different things and what creates each one of these different aspects. Um, how you can make a wave taller or shorter or longer or um, shorter distance wise as far as how long the wave is um, and different and heavier and lighter and all these different things. So now that we've got that out of the way, displacement is king. It's the only thing that really, it's one of two things that matters, displacement and how you shape it. So we're talk start talking about the height difference in waves. Let's start with that. Now, what that does is that has to deal with the, both exactly what I said, how much water is being displaced and how it's being displaced, how it's being shaped. Now, the way that it's shaped in order to create a taller wave is you have to have a hole sit in the, it has to deal with, uh, and not just, this isn't just height, this is most of them. It has to deal with the hole and the angle that the hole sits at. So if we're going to talk about a boat hull and how it's sitting in the water, how tall of a surf wave is going to be dependent on how that boat sits in the water. If it's going to be sitting more parallel to the water, that's going to be something that uh, will will make it so that it's going to throw a wave that is a little bit longer. If you have a boat that's, it, when the boat's sitting a little bit more bow high in the water, that's going to create a wave that is going to be taller behind the boat. So the difference that you have in wave height is primarily dependent on the angle of the hull and how far, how deep the back end of the boat is in the water in some regards compared to the front end. So t in total, the deeper the back end is sitting in the water, the higher the wave, the taller the wave is going to be. But um, that wave may get stretched out a little bit more as more of the bow is pushed down into the water. So there's uh, just about all boats have some way of controlling this, uh, whether it's on something like a Centurion or a Massacraft where there's a center plate that will adjust the wave angle, or there's something like a Malibu that's got a wedge that pulls the back end down and really lifts the bow out of the water. Um, there's ways to try and make it so that you can have a taller wave overall. Um, the second, and the, the way that you typically will do that is with ballast and ballast location. So if, if you want to have to create a wave that's really tall, you typically have a lot of ballast towards the rear of the boat. Um, now the, and that's where something like on, for Malibu, the wedge is in particular, uh, a very big deal when we're tar start talking about the height of a surf wave, because it's basically the same as dropping a thousand plus pounds right on the very back swim platform of the boat. So it's going to pull the bow up really high. It's going to have the, the back end sit down in the water and it's going to create a wave that that is really tall. Um, and in the case of Malibu in particular, it's going to look really tall because it's really pulling the back end of the boat down deeper into the water. And so you're almost looking full, straight on or even slightly up at a surf wave. So it can look actually a lot bigger than it is, especially if there's not a surfer on the wave. So that's something that's a really important piece to, to understand when we're talking about wave height. Now, wave length is kind of the other piece, and it is kind of an inverse relationship to the wave height. So just as you want to try and push the bow up in the air to create a longer surf wave, in or, or sorry, to create a taller surf wave, to create a longer surf wave, you're going to actually want to push the bow down into the water, get more of the total boat running surface down into the water. Now you need to have a proper mix because if you're running with your butt, the, the back end of the boat really high up in the air and you've got the bow down in the water, well, you, you're going to create a surf width that's got no power at all and it's not going to have any height. And so you have to drop everything down. Like it's not just dropping the bow down, it's dropping and sinking the entire boat down in the water. But, but you're going to want to run more parallel to the water to lengthen out your surf wave. Now, just as I mentioned, what happens with when you start talking about displacing water, the top, the longer you make your surf wave, the sh the less height it is going to have. So you can have a wave that's really big and tall behind the boat, 
Um, but it's not going to have a very long run. It, it's not going to have a very long surfable area because you're just stacking it with a bunch of water behind the boat. If you want to see this, just get your boat back, throw it all the way in the back end and run it at, you know, 10 miles an hour and you'll have a big wall of water behind the boat, but it's going to be something that nobody will have any fun surfing on because you're just going to be standing there because they won't have any room to move around. On the other side, um, we've actually shot some videos, um, one that we just recently released where we were showing what it was like to surf 40 feet behind the boat. That's typically probably not the best way you want to surf because the wave is really long, but I typically would want a little bit more height and a little bit more power to the surf wave. So we would slow the boat down a little bit and make it so it's a little bit closer to the boat. Now, 40 feet is kind of an exaggeration, but is it possible on the right boat to have a surf wave that's 25 to 30 feet long? Absolutely. In fact, that's the wave I prefer to surf on. We have a ton of length to generate speed and to and uh, to work with and to catch you if you end up falling back on the wave. But you also have plenty of wave height and wave power and size that's going to make it so that you can do whatever tricks you want to do. So that comment, it's, it's finding the equilibrium between wave length and wave height that most people are trying to do. And certain boats will do that better than others. But really what it comes down to is just, just sheer the water volume that goes behind the boat. And you're dealing with the same water volume. It's just how you shape it and whether you lengthen it out or shorten it up. So the key to making both a longer wave and, a sh and also a taller wave is just straight up water volume and displacing more water. So um, the other factor I will mention that when you start talking about wavelength is speed. So there's, uh, you'll also, you'll oftentimes hear about engaging different plates and things that you push down a center plane of length and the way way out. Um, that's very slightly true, but it's not going to impact the wavelength that much. Um, it's more going to change the shape of a surf wave. The biggest and the most effective way of lengthening a surf wave is speed. So if you want a longer wave, you just need to speed up. And you, the once again, the key is having enough water volume behind the boat that as you speed up, the wave will still maintain enough power and enough size to have a proper have a proper amount of push. Um, all the way up to in that video that we shot where we were surfing 40 feet behind the boat, we were going 14 miles an hour. Like it was way faster than most people would normally want to surf, faster than I want to surf. Um, behind that same boat that we shot that with a Centurion RI245, I surf behind that boat personally at about 11.8 is the speed that I go, um, which is faster than I've gone behind other boats because it can displace more water. So, um, I, on like a Malibu as an example, on like a 23 LSV, um, I'll oftentimes surf, uh, I typically will surf at like 10.6, somewhere right in there. Um, almost always below 11 miles an hour. Um, mainly because if I go faster than that, the wave doesn't have enough push and have enough power. Um, where on that Centurion, because it displaces uh, so much water, we can go faster. And so that that's the key is I normally recommend going as fast as you can while still having enough power on the surf wave because then you just get more room to work with and play with. So that that's kind of the, the key, but you can pick whatever's going to work best for you and what you're looking to do. And if I, um, like I've got friends that come with us that are bigger guys that are like 300 pounds, we're going to uh, slow the boat down a little bit for him to build up a little more wave height and and uh, such right behind the boat to keep them in the pocket so their pocket's not going to be quite as long where if I have, um, I mean, if I set it up for my kids, I mean, they could surf at 13 miles an hour, no problem at all, um, easily. And that's just because they don't need a big, pounding, powerful surf wave. They just need something that's pretty mellow behind the boat to stay on. So I digress. Um, anyways, next thing we can talk about is the shape of a surf wave. So um, the biggest thing that will impact the surf wave on the boat is the shape of the hull of the boat. So um, it's that's going to be piece number one. The second thing when we start talking about wave shape is the device or system that shapes and uh, forms a surf wave. So the surf system and other applying pieces. So we're starting talking about wave um, we're we'll start talking about hull design. So there's really two main hull designs that exist in the industry. There's a flat bottom hull design where if you look at the very back transom of the boat, it's going to, it's going to come in and have a very slight V angle to it. And then it's going to kind of flatten out and it's going to come up and have a very slight V, v angle coming out the other side. It looks like a really elongated U shape. Um, that's really shallow. So it's, this is what I refer to as a flat hole shape. 
Um, we've done a bunch of other videos that talk about hole designs extensively, so I'm not going to get into this too much. Um, but basically, a flat hole shape is a better shape for wakeboarding and water skiing. It, um, sorry, wakeboarding with a very large amount of ballast in the boat, like pro-level wakeboarding, uh, like as in more than stock ballast wakeboarding. Um, and that where, um, and also a better setup for slalom skiing because it's a little bit more balanced and it's going to displace less water. Um, the next shape that you have is going to be a V-hole shape that is going to be something more in line with what you see on uh, like a lot of cruiser boats or things of that nature. Um, this is a little bit newer design technology when we start talking about surf boat design. And this is a hole that's going to be more adept for wake surfing because when you're surfing, you are typically splitting the surf wave and going to one side of the boat or the other side of the boat. And unless you've got like an old school Mastercraft X80 that's twin engines that can throw a very mediocre surf wave on both sides of the boat. Um, there are some guys that do that, in which case that doesn't apply. But for the vast majority of surf boats out there, you're creating a wave on one side or the other. By having the way, by having a uh, V hole, it's going to naturally split the water to one side or split it to the other side, and it's going to make it so that that wave will form and shape much easier um, than it will be with a flat hole shape, just because the hole itself and the shape of the hole is doing most of the heavy lifting. So that's uh, that's that component um, as far as the hole design. The other aspect is the way the surf system and other applicable systems work. So you can have what we refer to as a brake style system where the plate, where like a plate or deflection device or something comes straight out the side of the boat. Um, this would be an example like a Malibu Surfgate, a um, Nautique NSS. Um, there's variations of it with stuff like uh, Supra's swell system, things of that nature. Um, and then you have a tab style system where it's more that it comes off of the back of the boat and deploys in a downward angle. So it's, it's going to deploy down instead of deploying out the side. Um, this is what we refer to as a tab style system. Um, once again, we've had have other videos that we go through this in, in great detail and great depth. I just want to talk about the surf waves, which is when we're start, talking about the shape of a surf wave, um, the, the uh, brake style or gate style systems these typically do not impact the surf wave shape at all. Most of them are either on or off, or they will adjust the surf wave, but it's a very minor adjustment. Because um, what they're doing is they're actually changing how much the boat swings in a crabbing motion left or right. So in other words, instead of the back of the boat going at an angle straight down the water, like straight down the path the boat would normally run, it's going down the water at a slight ang at a crabbing angle, similar to what you'd see in like an airplane or something. And so that's going to look more like something like this uh, or something where it's angled more as far as how it's flowing um, in, in order to create a wave pocket on one side. Now, the reason why it's going to do this is because it, or the, what um, this is going to have a slight impact on the shape of the wave, but mostly it's just going to clean up the wave on one side or the other. And it typically will result in a fairly steep wave shape from the beginning. A tab style system is going to not only give you a very slight crabbing motion, but it's mainly going to pitch the nose of the boat down a little bit closer to the water. Um, a lot of these systems are paired with a center plate system that's going to duplicate and do the same thing. The one exception is the Malibu wedge um, that's on Malibu and Axis boats, which I mentioned before. Um, but that center plate is going to push the bow down further into water, create a slight lift on the back end of the boat. Um, this is going to do a similar thing to what we mentioned before um, as far as lengthening out your surf wave. But what it's mainly going to do is, is mellowing out your wave. So when we were talking about wave shape, a mellow wave shape is going to be created using those plates pushing it down, and where a steep wave shape is going to be created by pulling the bow up and making it so the back end of the boat sits a little deeper down the water. They're fairly closely, behind most boats, there's a direct relationship between wave height and wave steepness. So you end up with a taller, steeper wave, or you end up with a shorter, mellower wave is typically how it works behind virtually all surf boats. Um, the one exception being a Centurion or Supreme, but that's because of that that hull design that's got more of a, a V-hull. Um, MB boats could also be kind of thrown into a similar vein. They've got some other uh, unique aspects to it, but they would fit in a similar type of category. Um, with those boats, 
the wave shape and the wave height are independent variables. So you can have a big mellow wave um, or a smaller, steeper wave um, behind like a Centurion or a Supreme, which can be particularly helpful for like skim cell riders. So that's something to just keep in mind when we're talking about wave shape. Now, the next piece is the whole angle or the angle of the surf wave. Um, and that one is going to be almost entirely designated by the whole shape of the boat. Where I was talking about the flat hole shape versus the V hole shape, flat hole shape boats will typically have a wave that fans much more out to the side. V shape hole boats will um, push more of the water directly behind the boat. And it's going to, um, it's going to make it so that the wave stretches further out back behind the boat and has a deeper pocket. So, um, as I said, there are pros and cons to that one, but that one's entirely based on weight on hole shape. Um, and so because of that, you typically have a significantly deeper pocket behind a boat like a Centurion or a Supreme, where um, other boats that would have more of a uh, shallow, where other boats that would have a shallow angle surfway would be something like a Mastercraft or a Malibu um, that had uh, a lot of experience riding behind and that they, they uh, throw throw in some cases a pretty good surf wave um but it's got it definitely has more of an angle that's perpendicular to the boat and it was kind of an odd experience um i was actually surfing behind a, a mastercraft x series not too long ago where i was surfing behind it and i was it, it almost felt like i was surfing out to the side of the boat um instead of behind it it was it was kind of odd um because it had such an aggressive angle going out the side um, where on like a Centurion as an example, you, you can be 30 feet behind the boat and you're still kind of sort of behind it. You're, you're maybe, maybe very slightly to the side of the corner um, because the pocket just goes basically almost straight back like a whiteboard wake. Um, so that's something that's, that's a difference and distinction between those different boats. But that one um, is not really something on your boat you're going to be able to change much. It's primarily due to just the shape of the hull. Um, so the last one is the power of the surf wave. And this one just gets down to one pure, simple thing, which is what I talked about before, which is displacement. Um, the more water that is displaced behind the boat, the more or the more power that a surf wave is going to have. Now, one other thing I do want to talk about when we're talking about this, and since we mentioned hole design, we mentioned V-hole versus flat hole and such, is if you have a, um, if you have a flat hole shape that comes out versus a um, versus a V-hole that comes in. The difference that you end up having in the, uh, uh, is when, when we start talking about this and start talking about wave power, and this is where I was talking about how like firm or how soft a wave is, oftentimes when you have a, wave, a boat that is creating a surf wave because it's a flat hole that has a device that goes out the side of it, you end up with a wave that's really soft and kind of squishy because the, the boat is yawing and crabbing to the side and a lot of water is being displaced directly out the sides of the boat. So if you are, if you go on like a Malibu or a Nautique or something that has this style system, you just see water just shooting out the sides, um, where, both the side that the, um, that the gates are placed on, but even the other side as well, you just see water blasting out the sides because the water is, the boat is basically just plowing water along and you have water coming out the back end, but you also have water displaced out the sides. On a V-hole shape, you don't have nearly as much of that. The water is typically funneled directly back behind the boat because of the way that not only the boat sits, but, but the surf systems that engage and, and, and put a very slight lean to the boat as it's pushing along. That's going to funnel more water behind the boat, so it's displaced more, a little bit more behind than directly out the sides. That is going to be what creates wave how soft or how firm a wave is. So firmer waves will typically be found behind um, like a Centurion, a Supreme, um, an MB to some degree. Um, in some aspects, because uh, of the way that they do stuff, Mastercrafts will do a slightly better job with wave firmness um, if you want a firmer wave, where softer waves are often um, behind uh, Nautiques, behind Malibus. Um, Super actually does a fairly firm wave because of the way that they do their surf system and their hole design. It's kind of, it's kind of a unique combination. It's not as firm as some of the V-hole shapes because a Super is definitely a flat bottom hole, but um, it is something that will create a little bit firmer um, firmer wave than what you get behind some of the other boats. So um, hopefully that is that uh, that piece is hopefully helpful information. So the question that you have and that it comes to mind for a lot of people is what is the best wave shape? Do I want a steep wave? Do I want a mellow wave? 
do I want a firm wave, a soft wave? Do I want a wave with steep angle or mellow angle or whatever? Well, it depends. And uh, we've done a couple of videos on this in the past where we show some different designs, but really what it boils down to is depending on a few different variables, such as how large of a rider you are, what kind of a board you are riding on, whether it's a surf style board, a skim style board, a hybrid, something in, in there, um, what you are, how advanced you are in your riding and what you are looking to do. So those, they were kind of the four variables that I would throw in the mix um, that would determine what kind of a surf wave would be the ideal surf wave for you. Um, and it's interesting because like the ideal surf wave for me can change when I'm out on the boat. If I'm riding my surf style board, it's going to be one thing. If I'm riding my skim style board, it can be another thing. Um, in some ways, I actually would change the shape of the wave a little bit, you know, halfway through my surf set. Um, if I'm wanting to work on doing spins or something like that, I may set it up a little different than if I'm doing airs. Um, now, it's it's not a great thing to learn how to spin exclusively on a flat top wake um, because you can't always change it all the time. But that is something if I'm working on it or developing things, having the ability to change that surf wave is going to make a big difference. So what the ideal surf wave is, is going to be dependent on the rider. Now, that being said, you almost always are going to be at an advantage by having more total water displacement. I'm going to throw in one exception to that, but we'll get to that in a second. So the more water volume you have behind the boat, the more mass you have to the surf wave, the more power that it has is almost always going to be a beneficial and a good thing. If you notice it's got too much power and it's pushing in the back of the boat, well, then you can speed up and it will lengthen the wave out and make it a little bit easier. The one exception to it that I said I'd throw out is if you have a boat that has a very difficult time throwing out a mellow surf wave. Um, an example of this would be um, in particular like boats from Nautique and Malibu because um, the way that they do their system design, you're going to be pretty hard pressed to get a wave that's mellow shaped. It's it's going to almost always have some level of steepness to it, um, which for a rider like me is not going to be a big deal. If you've got smaller riders, particularly kids, uh, that's going to be a little bit harder for them. So having more water volume is not necessarily a good thing because as you do it, the wave is just going to get bigger and steeper. If you have about the, the steepness and the power of the wave or the size of the wave are two independent variables. Um, like on my boat, I can run all of the ballast in it all the time. Even my kids and other smaller riders can get out and ride behind it. Um, and it's not going to impact their ability to surf on the wave because they just go up this big smooth mound as they're going up and down because I can mellow the wave out a lot for them. All right. So the last thing I wanted to talk about now that I've covered the stuff with the wave shapes that you may be wanting to know is what does each one of the different boat manufacturers make as far as like, what are the variables that they have to their surf waves? Um, most of the boat manufacturers are kind of locked into one of these, one of um, the different variations or variables. So let's talk about what we have as far as the different boats and what kind of surf waves they create. So we'll start with the top. We'll talk about Malibu. Um, Malibu typically has a wave height that is tall. And that's primarily due to the wedge and the way that it digs the back end of the boat down in the water. So it's got a really tall surf wave. Um, and overall, they're displacing a fair bit of water volume. Like if you if you look at it, um, like their ballast ratings are on their website. They're a little baked in because they include all the ballast, plus they include the full displacement of the wedge um, at full speed, which is not something that most people use. Um, very few people run their wedge at a setting of seven. Um, but that is something that is there. So um, they do create, they do displace a fair bit of water. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, as far as wave length, that one is going to be a little bit more uh, on the medium end of the spectrum. So you, you can potentially make it a little bit longer, but you're going to sacrifice the wave height in doing it. So you've got a wave that's fairly tall. It's going to have about a medium length if you go with the out-of-the-box settings that you're going to run on Malibu. Um, and that most people will run, but you can vary that and, you know, lengthen it out a little bit more or shorten it up a little bit. Um, and I would say that this wavelength is medium to short. Um, it, it, the way I would dial it up and set it up, it's a medium wavelength. It's pretty, it's pretty good the way I set it up. Um, but I find a lot of people run their Malibu on a short, short length because a lot of the factory settings are short. Like some of the factory settings are like 10.6 miles an hour and such. Um, and that's going to create a fairly short wave. Um, as so far as um, the steepness, that's going to vary with size. 
And that's going to, it's going to be slightly on the steeper end, but it really comes down to the more you engage the wedge, the steeper the wave is going to get. So it starts at a, at moderate steepness um, to slightly mellow, and it bumps all the way up to um, really steep. But it's going to get bigger, and it's going to get steeper as the size or the wave height goes up. So the bigger it is, the steeper it is, and vice versa. If you if you make the wave smaller or stretch out the length of it, it's going to make it more mellow as well. So as far as angle, the um, angle is going to be fairly shallow. Um, so it's going to be fanning a little bit more outside to the outside of the boat. Um, if you speed up a little bit more, it can tuck it a little bit more towards the inside. Um, so it's going to be shallow, maybe a little bit more to the medium angle level um, as you speed up. Um, and that's going to be due to, and as far as the power goes, that one's going to be a medium power as well. So, um, and I put medium power because at the front of the wave, a Malibu actually has um, what I would say on the high power spectrum, but towards the back of the surf wave, it drops to low power. So it's a perfect example of a wave that as you fade further back on the wave and get towards the back of the pocket, you lose all of the push um, that exists in the surf wave. So that all goes away and it's, it's um, you can't get, the same kind of power towards at the back of the surf wave as you get towards the front of the surf wave. So the next one, so that's that that's what I would consider as far as Malibu goes. Um, just to, so you know, the way that they shape it is they've got a wedge, they've got surf gate, um, they've got a flatter hole shape, and they've got a um, what I would what I would say is a large amount of ballast um, to back that up. So that would be that piece. The next one is we're going to talk about Mastercraft. Um, so. We're going to, sorry, let's restart that. <laughs> okay. The next one we're going to talk about is Mastercraft. So Mastercraft is got, when we start talking about waves, is it's got a height level of medium. It's got a, uh, it's, um, it's got a wave length that I would consider to be short. And I'll get into the details of why this is the case in just a minute. Um, there's st how steep um, steepness or the shape is variable. Now, um, this one, how you have more customization to it. So where Malibu, it was, it, as you, the way it went bigger, it got steeper and smaller, it was more mellow. Mastercraft has a little bit more variation. You can control the steepness of the wave a little bit easier. Um, and you can make a wave that's a little bit bigger and still maintain a little bit more mellow characteristics if you want to. And that's just because of the surf system that they run. Um, with their surf star system, what was previously known as Gen 2, it's the same thing. Um, but it gives you a little bit more variation on the way to set up the surf wave. So as far as the power goes, um, I would say it's got a medium power band. So it's got it's got decent power as you're surfing on it. Um, this is, and by the way, this... Uh, Characteristic. I'm talking about the X series. So this is the top tier Mastercraft. If we're getting to the XT and the NXT, is a very different. I'm going to talk about that in just one second. So, um, but um, and then the uh, angle of it is shallow. So it it pulls really far to the outside, and that's just a deal, combination of the surf system they run and the uh, and the hull shape that the boat has. Now. Um, going along that, they use a tab style surf system, um, a plate system in the center. Uh, they use, uh, that they call the surf star system. Um, they use a, um, they have a flat hull, but the biggest factor that we can talk about is the ballast configuration of Mastercrafts. Um, Mastercraft actually has the ability to throw a better surf wave than a lot of the other boats. The challenge they run into is they just don't put enough ballast in the boat. Um, their m heaviest ballasted wake surf boat that they build packs 4,000 pounds of ballast, which is a fair bit. But if you include a wedge, it's not its not even as much as like Malibu's 22 footer. Um, and it's nowhere touching like a Centurion as an example. So, um, but it just, they just don't have enough ballast, especially if you start talking about the X series versus the XT versus the NXT. So the X series um, definitely does the best job as far as a surf wave goes. Um, I've had great times surfing behind like an X22 and an X24. Um, it, ha it factors some of these other pieces in that I, I did mention as far as the wave height and the wave length and the angle and such. Um, but if you really dial in an X series, and especially if you add extra weight, um, it gets to where more like you have a tall wave um, and the length can lengthen out just a little bit further. 
Um, but when you start talking about like the XT and the NXT, I mean, they just don't pack anywhere near enough ballast, um, in my opinion, as to what you want out of a surf boat. And so I would essentially downgrade the height. I would, I mean, it, we're already at a short length, but it gets notably shorter. Um, and I would downgrade the power to low for an XT and an NXT. And that's just purely and simply dealing with how much ballast that, they, that those boats pack. Um, they just really need more weight, particularly with the systems that they run. Um, but they're they're reluctant to do it, I know, because of uh, storage space. So there's always a battle between storage space and uh, ballast, and getting a boat that can strike the strike a proper balance between those two is is uh, a challenge. Um, I would always opt towards more ballast because um, I want to have a better surf wave, but um, especially if that ballast is flexible. Um, but that is something that um, other people may have some differing opinions to that than I do. So next. Uh, next one let's talk about is Nautique. So um, Nautique is kind of an interesting one. They've got a kind of an interesting wave shape, but I would say their height on their wave um, is medium. Medium height, medium length. So I've noticed it's got a little bit more wavelength than like a Mastercraft does. Um, height's pretty comparable um, to what it is. Um, shape you've got it's it's just straight up steep so probably the biggest uh complaint or challenge that i hear with nautique surf waves is it's a steep wave you can either have a smaller steeper wave or a bigger steeper wave or uh, sorry a smaller steep wave and a bigger steeper wave and there's just no way to create a mellow surf wave behind it um and that is in mu much case just due to the combination of the surf system and the whole shape got a flat hull it's got a gate style surf system kind of like a malibu but you don't have the wedge component um it's got what they call the ncrs which is essentially just a extent a piece of the hull that, that goes down a little bit further um but they've got a hull that's designed for wakeboarding and so because of that it's going to have a shape that when you slow it down it is just going to be steep and that's what it comes down to so um arguably the best wake or the best wakeboard boat built um, for pro level wakeboarding is the G series, uh, particularly the G23. But for surfing, um, it does a decent job if you like a really steep wave. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, as far as angle, it's right down the middle of medium as well. And power is medium as well. Um, it does feel, I would say that an antique wave feels softer than um, it potentially should for the power and the size. Um, and that's just because of the, the way that they design it, the, the way that they create the wave with the surf system. Um, now that that's, this is what I would refer to as the G as the G series, the Paragon, the G23, G25, um, to be totally straightforward. I haven't surfed behind an S series. Um, so an S23 and S25, I don't, uh, an S21, I don't know how it go how that goes from when I hear it's just a little bit of a downgrade below the G series. Um, but still will throw a decent surf wave. Um, I can tell you from my experience, the GS series is an entirely different discussion than this. Um, I would take the the height on a GS to sh to small, length to short, shape to middle ground, and just stays at middle ground. Um, short angle and low power. Um, it's it's not a surf boat. Um, it's a it's a crossover boat that's an okay ski ba boat that can throw a surf wave. Um, that's great for kids and that, but if you're wanting to like really get after a surfing, you're going to have a hard time behind a GS. So, um, from my experience, that's been the case. Um, and what it really comes down to with those boats is they just don't pack enough ballast. Um, I mean, a G series is 2,800 pounds of ballast, um, from a factory, even like a Paragon is running actually even less than that. Um, and the reason why they don't put a whole lot more ballast than this in the boats is, uh, number one to keep storage space, but the other factor to it is that because of the way that their surf system is designed, if they add too much weight, the wave starts to break down and crumble. So it's because of the combination of the hull design and the surf system, you, you can only put a certain amount of weight in the boat. And I'm familiar with a lot of people who have tried to add a bunch of additional weight in the boats to make them surf better, and they just actually make the weight worse. And so you've got a limiting factor with what it can do because of the nature of if you just put too much weight, it doesn't deflect enough, you don't crab as much to the side, and your surf wave starts to crumble and break down. So, um, that's something else that you can have out in my other boats, such as Malibu's. Um, but 
for Nautique is particularly pronounced and why they don't run as much weight in their boats. So hopefully that, that uh, helps you there. Next is Supra. So um, Supra does a great boat. Um, I'm actually I, I'm actually a, a fan of Supra, and, and I, I've mentioned before. I'd, I'd say if I if I wasn't buying like a Centurion or a Supreme, um, Supra would be right there in the mix as far as one of the boats I would um, I would take a much closer look at um, if it was me. So as far as the wave height, um, a Supra is going to be a medium height. So um, and then as far as the length. I would say it's medium as well, as far as how as far as how it compares and how it rides. Um, the shape is going to be uh, variable, um, and you have the ability to make it a little steeper, have the ability to make it a little more mellow. The way their surf system operates, it, it does a good job in that regard. Um, you have an angle that is going to be on a medium angle as well, and lastly, is you have power that's medium. So. Why is it right down the middle, like medium across the board and a variable shape? Um, the answer is because Super does a pretty good job at blending, um, putting in a decent amount of ballast in their boat, um, and have and because of the way that they do their surf system, in my opinion, is probably the best surf system for the whole shape that you can do. It's kind of like a mix between a tab and a brake style system that deploys downwards instead of out the side, um, and, but it goes all the way uh, to perpendicular to the boat when it's deploying downwards, which is kind of a unique perspective. Um, but it does a good job. Um, the only downside you really have to like Supra's, um, and this goes to Moomba as well, is that the wave, um, the wave just, it, the boat just needs more ballast is the big factor. Um, they started adding more, which is really helpful. Uh, but like in their 23 foot boat now, you're dealing with right about 4,000 pounds of ballast, which is, which is not bad. It's a lot better than what like Mastercraft and Nautique are running. Um, but it's not as much displacement as what you get out of a Malibu or like a Centurion. Um, this is once again, back to the same discussion of it's the amount of water you displace and how you displace it. Um, they've done a decent job of displacing it. There, there's some aspects like the angle and the, and the power that you're not going to get much more out of even, even if you displaced it more. Um, but they do a decent job at displacing how the water moves. Um, you just need to displace more water. Um, most of the people I know that run Supras and that really love surfing behind them, they're adding about a thousand pounds of steel weight to them um, to get them to surf at a, at a high level, um, which if you're okay doing, it's not a bad way to go. Um, but it, it, that's something that if you had more ballast just right out the gates, it would end up being, um, could throw an even better surf weight than it does. Um, which speaking of which, this is something that I actually have people ask me, which is, why don't, uh, why don't like Supra, why doesn't Supra add more ballast to the boats? Um, the answer is, is that it has to deal in large part with the capacity ratings of the boat. They build the boats in a certain way. And if they add more ballast, it would remove their ability to have the same capacity. Um, Supra can do more ballast than like, let's say Nautique. Uh, and the reason why is because if you added more ballast to Nautique, not only would the weight break down, but you'd also have a major problem with keeping water out of the front and out of the back of the boat. Um, if you hit pull up back up, pull back on the throttle really quick, you'll have water shoot through the back because you have that recessed walkway in the back of like an Nautique. A Supra has a recessed walkway, but it's not nearly as recessed as like an Nautique is. Um, Malibu typically does not do much of a recessed walkway or it's, an, it's, a, it's not as recessed as some of the other boats, which is one of the reasons why they can put a little bit more ballast in the boat, um, and still not hit water off the back as an example. So. That's something to keep in mind is uh, that that's a factor and it goes into how these boats are designed um, and how much ballast they pack and how they're designed to keep water in the lake and out of the boat. So uh, next one I'm going to talk about is Taiga. So Taiga um, borrows a lot of things from the other manufacturers. They don't really have anything that's really unique. They have their convex V hull, which um, has, has some merit to it, but it takes like a flat hull and makes it even flatter. Um, so it, it just exacerbates some of those issues, um, for weightboarding, it, it actually did a pretty good job and there was some real good application. Um, but it's effectively the same convex V hole that they were been running, uh, for 20 years, um, on their boats that they designed initially for wakeboarding. So as far as height of the wave goes, um, we'll go, go to medium. Um, and this would be for like their ZX series, their top, top of the line. Um, if you go down to the other ones, like, um, the Z series and, and below, 
from there, that's going to drop down to a little bit lower height. So um, length is going to be medium. You're going to have a shape. You're going to do a um, have a variable shape there. Um, next one that you've got is you've got uh, angle is going to be shallow to medium. So it's, it's kind of medium, but it's a little bit more on the shallow side. Um, it's going to have power. Um, from my experience, all of the ones have been low to medium. So um, it's okay. Like overall, Taiga does an okay wave. Um, there's nothing really proprietary, unique, special about it. It just kind of is what it is. Um, and there's not, there's nothing like super crazy cool about it. Um, in my opinion, there's a lot of other manufacturers that do a better job as far as creating a surf wave. Um, but you can, but it, it, you, it's, it is one of those boats that if you add more weight to the wave will get better. Um, but if you're going to, from a wave creation standpoint, I would throw a Mastercraft in Malibu. Um, and Atiga, I mean, really all the other boats on this list, I would, I would, I would personally put about Tiger from a wave creation standpoint. So, so, um, the last one we wanted to talk about is, uh, the one that I'm most familiar with, which is Centurion. And by the way, I'm, when I'm talking about Centurion, I'm refer, I'm uh, referring to Supreme as well. Um, I'm also was talking about like Supra, Moomba, Malibu, Axis. Um, those different things. I'm just kind of lumping those together. So what I said with Malibu also applies to Axis. What I said about Super also applies to Moomba. Um, the uh, the one difference is, I guess, the the surf capabilities and the surf system on Moomba is slightly different than it is on Supra. And I like Supra's quite a bit better. Um, but the, what I'm going to say is applying across those brands, and most of it really applies and is correct. So um, same thing with Taiga and ATX. Now, when we're talking about Centurion, um, and I promise I'm trying not to be biased on this even though i have a centurion logo on my shirt so that you know is take what i'm saying with a grain of salt but i hope that what you've done with listening to what i'm talking about here is that i'm trying to i'm trying to shoot as straight as i possibly can and give you the accurate information as best as i can possibly give it um but when we're talking about the height on a centurion is going to be tall um though that can slightly adjust depending on what the wavelength is like i said the length is long. Um, this one is fairly undisputed. I don't think anybody really makes an argument that there's a boat that can throw a wave that is as long as what you can get behind a Centurion. Um, and that is a combination of the both the total water displacement and uh, the, the total water displacement as well as uh, the whole shape of the boat um, and how it displaces that water. Um, the next one is uh, the shape is variable but i'm going to put a little bit of a difference one independent so what i mean by that is that it is variable in other words you can, can change the shot the shape of the wave and make it more shallow make it all the way up to hollow and you can do that without necessarily impacting the size of the wave now if you make it a lot more mellow it will shrink it slightly but you can have a tall big mellow wave you can also have a smaller, steeper wave. You have the ability to customize the wave shape independent of the wave size, which is a really unique thing on a Centurion. That's primarily it's due to do the combination of the surf system and the hull design. That is that it would be a unique thing to Centurion. So the angle on it is deep. So in other words, it's got a really deep pocket angle um, that fans back fans back parallel to the boat instead of out perpendicular to the size, and is as far as power is high. Now, um, the question is why? Why does it have these variables? And why? Why am I? Why am I giving it these variables? Because these are all subjective. I, I get that they're not. You know, I don't have a straight measurement of like, oh, it's got, you know, twenty eight point three newtons of power. That's that's not how this works. It, it's just a subjective thing. Um, in fact, if any of you have an idea or have a recommendation how we can objectively measure the power of the surf waves without you know, spending $100,000 on an MIT study, that would be awesome. We'd love to hear it because um, we've been trying to find a way to show this. But what it really comes down to is the reason why this boat, why a Centurion cr can do this or create this is because of the two variables I spoke about at the very, very beginning, which is the way, the amount of water that is displaced behind the boat, which there's no argument. There's not another boat that displaces more water than a Centurion, just simply because of 
how deep the hole sits in the water from the beginning. It drafts 36 inches of water, which is how deep the boat sits in the water when there's no weight in it. Plus, you add more weight into it than you do in any other boat by a significant number. Um, I mean, you're talking about like in an RI-265, it's 5,850 pounds of water ballast that you add all of it into when you're surfing. Um, that's kind of a unique, that's a really unique thing. So it's digging the deepest hole, H-O-L-E, once again, plus you have the most customization of how to manipulate that water once it comes off the back of the boat. Because you can change the way the boat is going through the water across all access points using the combination of your plates um, at the back of the boat, as well as the ballast setup in the boat and the hole design that funnels water a different direction. So the combination of all those different things is what gives a Centurion those different ratings. But if you don't believe it or you have questions about it, just go out and write it and test it for yourself. So um, I'm speaking about all these different boats from experience. Um, I'm not trying to prop up or rag on any different boat or anything of that nature. I mean, overall, you can get a good surfway behind any one of these different boats, but they do have different variables that are independent and unique. And this is both from feedback I'm getting from lots and lots of people, as well as my personal experience surfing behind all of these and getting just what I've experienced and what I've felt um, in my time that I spent riding behind them. So hopefully that gives you a good idea um, and, and helps a bit. If you've got any questions about the stuff that I just covered, you're welcome to reach out to us uh, at Boardco, and we're happy to answer any questions you've got. You're welcome to comment on this video you're, um, on YouTube. Uh, you're welcome to give us any feedback, send us an email, a text, a phone call, however you want to get a hold of us, and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions, to talk about this, to supply some feedback. Um, we really love talking about this stuff, and we really enjoy it a lot. Regardless, just make sure that you go and can have the best possible time behind any one of these surf boats, behind your boat, behind any boat that you may be looking to get. Go have an awesome time behind it, and don't sell yourself short by um, getting a subpar surf wave. Let's set it up and make it the best it can possibly be and take the time to dial it in, because if you do, you're going to have a, just a so, so much better experience with your family and your friends out on your boat. So... Um, once again, thank you so much for spending the time with us. Um, we really appreciate being able to talk to this stuff, talk to you guys about this stuff. Um, it really matters a lot to us and we hope, hopefully it can be helpful information to you. So once again, thank you. This is Mitch from Board Co. and we'll talk to you later.